Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. Integrity is mentioned some 40 times in the Bible. And a study of the several different words, which are all translated into English using our word integrity, shows that it refers to being upright in heart, honest in your actions, committed to doing right regardless of the cost. While there are dozens of biblical characters whose lives reveal a lack of integrity, there are three individuals whom the Bible describes as men of integrity, Job and David in the Old Testament and Jesus Christ. Job, of course, was the one who struggled with his health and the issue of integrity in relationship to being rewarded by God. Four different passages in the book of Job speak of his integrity. The first was God's recognition of Job as a man of integrity. Have you considered my servant Job? God asked Satan, adding, There is none like him on earth, a blameless man and upright, one who fears God and shuns evil. And still he holds fast to his integrity. When Job's world began to collapse as the result of the trials which came from Satan, his wife urged him to give up his integrity, which she thought would probably result in God striking him dead, thus ending his problems. Are you still holding on to your integrity, she asked, quickly adding, curse God and die. So how did Job respond? Till I die, he said, I will not deny my integrity. The second individual whose integrity was recognized by both friends and enemies was David, the shepherd of Israel. As for me, said David, I will walk in my integrity. He did too. While Job's life teaches that integrity is something which you can hold or keep, David's life teaches that a man can fail and yet regain his integrity. David's life, of course, was far from perfect. Michael Josephson says, We judge ourselves by our best intentions, but we are judged by our worst act. That was true of David, whose affair with Bathsheba was a moral lapse which history will never forget. Yet David became repentant and remorseful, which reflected his true integrity. Psalm 78, verse 72, a beautiful passage says, And David shepherded them, meaning Israel, with integrity of heart. With skillful hands he led them. David's life lesson is that people of integrity know when they have chosen wrong and are quick to confess it and forsake it. The third who is recognized as a person of character and integrity was Jesus Christ. But what makes this significant is that it was not his disciples, his followers who talked about his integrity, but his enemies, the Pharisees, who constantly sought to discredit him. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, says Matthew, Teacher, they said, we know that you are a man of integrity and that you teach the way of God in accord with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. And from an unlikely source, the enemies of Jesus, comes a third truth about individuals who have integrity. They are not driven by public opinion. They don't play the grandstand or cater to the highest bidder. Integrity is based on convictions that there is both a right and a wrong, and the gray area wherein people are comfortable doing what makes them feel good is a wishy-washy no-man's-land of moral decay. The writer of Proverbs was right when he said, Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. You've just heard Dr. Harold Sala with Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. If you would like to listen to the program again, download a copy, subscribe to our e-commentary, or view other resources, visit guidelines.org. We would like to hear from you, too. You can email us at info at guidelines.org. That's info at guidelines.org. Thanks for listening, and we invite you to join us again for the next edition of Guidelines.